Clausius was so confident about his mathematics that he figured out that this irreversible process was going on out there in the wider cosmos. He speculated that the entropy of the entire universe had to be increasing towards a maximum and that there was nothing we could do to avoid this. This idea became known as the second law of thermodynamics and it turned out to be stranger and more beautiful, more universal than anything Clausius could have imagined. The second law of thermodynamics seemed to say that all things that gave off heat were in some way connected together. All things that gave off heat were part of an irreversible process that was happening everywhere. A process of spreading out and dispersing. A process of increasing entropy. It seemed that somehow the universe shared the same fate as a cup of tea. In the end, there is no escaping entropy. It's the ultimate move from order to decay and disorder that rules us all. Boltzmann's equation contains within it the mortality of everything, from a china jug to a human life to the universe itself. The process of change and degradation is unavoidable. The second law says the universe itself must one day reach a point of maximum entropy, maximum disorder. The universe itself must one day die. If everything degrades, if everything becomes disordered, you might be wondering how it is that we exist. How exactly did the universe manage to create the exquisite complexity and structure of life on Earth? Contrary to what you might think, it's precisely because of the second law that all this exists. The great disordering of the cosmos gives rise to its complexity. It's possible to harness this natural flow from order to disorder, to tap into the process and generate something new, to create new order, new structure. It's what the early steam pioneers had unwittingly hit upon with their engines. And it's what makes everything we deem special in our world, from this car, to buildings, to works of art, even to life itself. The engine of my car, like all engines, is designed to exploit the second law. It starts out with something nice and ordered, like this petrol, stuffed full of energy. But when it's ignited in the engine, it turns this compact liquid into a mixture of gases 2,000 times greater in volume, not to mention dumping heat and sound into the environment. It's turning order into disorder. What's so spectacularly clever about my car is that it can harness that dissipating energy. It can siphon off a small bit of it 
and use it for a more ordered process, like driving the pistons which turn the wheels. That's what engines do. They tap into that flow from order to disorder and do something useful. But it's not just cars. Evolution has designed our bodies to work thanks to the very same principle. If I eat this chocolate bar packed full of nice, ordered energy, my body processes it and turns it into more disordered energy that powers itself off the proceeds. Both cars and humans power themselves by tapping into the great cosmic flow from order to disorder. Although overall the world is falling apart in disorder, it's doing it in a seriously interesting way. It's like a, um, a waterfall that is rushing down, um, but the waterfall throws up a spray of structure, and those that spray of structure might be you or me or, or daffodil or whatever. So you can see that the unwinding of the universe, this collapse into disorder, can in fact be constructive.